demonstration is to show how to take your key block and we'll be transferring it using an offset process to label our other three blocks that we'll be using for the color blocks. So the first step is to ink it up as if you were going to be printing it. We have a pretty healthy layer of ink on there. Place your block in the jig. And then you need some sort of non-absorbent surface. So it could be tracing paper. It could be, this is a overhead transparency. I hole punched it thinking that I would be able to fit it on here, but because this piece of film is quite a bit smaller than my jig, I would need to move my pins and I'm, I don't want to do that because I'm using this registration system for another print. So instead of using the pins, I will just tape this down. So I'm centering it. And again, it doesn't matter that it's exactly centered, but once it's down, you don't want it to move around at all. So I'm going to be taping it into position using a little bit of painter's tape here. And that way we can flip it out of the way when we need it out of the way. But it it'll go back in the same position. So we're going to be printing the ink onto the plastic. And then after we get the image transferred to the film, we'll be moving that film out of the way and then pulling the key block out of the jig and replacing it with one of our blank blocks that will be used for our color color blocks. The nice thing about printing on the film is you can tell exactly where you've pressed hard enough. So at this point I'm going to be, I think I, I got all the key parts of the image. So carefully peel back the film. So this is what's called the offset. So we've taken the image and transferred it off onto the plastic. Now we pull the key block out and set it aside. And in its place, you'll place your second block. And then carefully leaving that film attached to the jig and try not to let it shift around, we're going to transfer it down onto the wood block. So you can use your wooden spoon again. Sometimes um, just the pressure of your hand may be enough. Let me try that first. And if it's not, then we'll bring in the wooden spoon. Okay, it's a little bit light. I think I will burnish it a little bit and see if we can get it a little bit darker. This does not need to be a perfect transfer. The main thing is that we have an idea of where those key shapes need to be. And then we can always do some additional marking on the block if we feel like we need it. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more rubbing here on the figures. They're a little bit light still. You don't want to put so much block, so much, so much ink on the plastic that it squeezes and smears. So I, I'd rather have the image a little bit too light than to put on so much ink that I make my lines too fat. Okay, I think that's just fine. So this will be one of my color blocks. I need to repeat this process for every color block that I plan to have. So in this case, I'll have a yellow block, I'll have a block that I'm inking in red ink, and I'm, I'll have a third block that I'm inking in blue ink. So I need to repeat this process three times. There's probably not enough ink left on this block to transfer again without re-inking it. So I'll refresh that ink layer on the block. Try not to get my jig dirty.
So this will just give us a fresh layer of ink on the acetate. Burnish that down. So we have some fresh ink on the film now. Remove the key block again. Replace it with the block that will be our blue block. Okay, this would be one of our second color blocks. And then we just repeat the process one more time. Re-ink the key block. the film off every time but I don't think there's a reason that you need to do that unless it shifts somehow and you get a double print. The reason that we're taking the extra step of transferring the image to this plastic is if you thought that you could just simply ink the block up and then print the image onto the block, one image would be reversed from the other one. So that's the reason why we take the step of transferring it to the offset plastic and then print it on the block. So each block should have the exact same orientation of the key shapes if you do it right. So for our last block, we'll transfer the ink. And again, use the wooden spoon. I'm mostly concerned about the hot air balloon area because that's where I have the most colors interacting with one another. The sky area really won't matter at all because that will all just be blue. But I do want to make sure that there's enough information in the landscape and in the hot air balloon to get those colors to line up accurately. Okay, I think that's enough information. So we'll end there.